guys, welcome back to a new video here in Wellness Month. Today I'm here with... Bibi. That's the Barbara Sturm. <laughs> I wanted to incorporate a video around skincare because I really feel it's such a big part of our wellness and like self-care journey. Whenever we feel we look good, we feel better. I wanted to interview you and hear all the like tips and tricks on like skincare. There is still so much confusion around this and yeah, kind of get a little deeper into it. There's a lot of confusion. This market is so crowded. It's so, you know, driven by marketing and less about, you know, what are we even treating? Skin is an organ. Yeah. We should not overlook that skin is an organ because, you know, things we do to our skin, we would never do to our heart, to, li to our liver, to our kidneys, whatever. Maybe it's sometimes good to just like take a step back and say, what is the ingredient science in a product? What does it do? Why is it anti-aging? It's, it's like easy to write something on the product and make it for something, but it's still just marketing. I think it's really important as a consumer to yeah. understand a little bit, you know, or visit a doctor, but understand a little bit what what it is we are we are using because it should be seen as part of the medical field, you know, and medical grade products don't necessarily yeah. say that's the right product you're going for. You have to really become an expert. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that today <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> you started as an esthetician doctor and used your orthopedic actually. Orthopedic. That's why I'm saying, you know, we need to sit, sit straight down here. Engage in <laughs> our core, our spine, you know, when we look at our phones all day long, you know, we get like problems in our neck. You know, we get double chin, nobody wants that. It's not a problem when you're young, but then later on, you will get um, uh, lots of problems from it. So I started as an orthopedic doctor and mm -hmm. I came to work with a scientist from Harvard and Pittsburgh and a group of orthopedic surgeons in um, Düsseldorf, Germany. And I helped um, pioneering a treatment where you take the blood from a patient, mm -hmm. you process it in a certain way and you spin it and you take the red blood cells away and the plasma with the anti-inflammatory proteins, you re-inject it into the joints. That was part of, um, you know, what was given to Kobe Bryant to save his career. But this anti-inflammatory mm. approach basically brings down inflammation and therefore the ongoing process of aging. So anti-inflammation and aging, you know, that inflammation and aging goes very, very close together. So my approach, it's really coming from this anti-inflammatory um, techniques and I translated the knowledge from the orthopedics into the skin and I created something you all know as blood facial or vampire facial some people call it or um, PRP yeah. that was my invention 20 years ago and that's how I came into this whole area of you know skin aesthetics and then my skin was really troubled. I had super dry skin. I had like blackheads all the time. I had to go and see my facialist every three weeks. It was super annoying. And my facialist would give me, because she was working out of like a little, you know, pharmacy boutique, whatever. So every yeah. time I went there, I brought like a bunch of products with me, like every, all these expensive creams and masks. And I don't know what I brought yeah. home and I spent all my money. and. I was like so confused because it wouldn't help my skin and I and this is not just cannot be possible that all these creams don't work yeah. you know and how can they not hydrate my skin so I decided to do my own little research and I created a cream my grandmother was a pharmacist and she helped me putting this oh, she together, helped put together. Yeah, it was really cool <laughs> and then I added the proteins for my blood and I created this blood cream or MC1 it's called and overnight literally overnight it healed my skin. I ever since really don't, I don't have to be cleaned out anymore. It was crazy wow, how that really changed amazing. my skin, yeah. It's really amazing how you use kind of your clinical research into now like most skincare products. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've been a huge fan since years, um, obviously through like modeling and always being on set, taking care of my skin was like part of my job in that sense. And I'm actually really curious what is, in your opinion, like the biggest skincare myth out there right now? The myth to me is that, you know, we have to damage our skin in order to heal our skin and, you know, have this yeah. baby skin, which we don't really want to have baby skin because it's mostly very vulnerable and then, you know, sun hits. But this, you know, quick fix and 
let's you know when we have acne or pigmentation or whatever it is let's scrub our face off acid peels retin-a glycolic hydroquinone name it let's yeah. you know damage our skin to the grounds in order to repair and i think the idea should be never damage your body you know you don't you don't want to damage your brain your heart your kidney you know we all have like abilities to regrow and heal but why yeah. would we damage yeah sure. so the idea um should be not damage and repair it should be always repair and heal repair and heal we should always be in repair and healing mode and don't have yourselves go through the cycle so we'll be using know? like less harsh products like peels and things like yeah, that yeah you should would say. really not um, have that on your list of products at all mm -hmm. yeah exfoliation yes if a product says resurfacing no Get it gone, out. gone 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 resurface not good exfoliation there are three forms of exfoliation. Number one, it's a facial scrub. It's just a normal mechanical situation. You, you know, scrub your face and you peel it off. Yeah, it's mechanically taking off dead skin cells. The second mm -hmm. form is an en enzymatic cleansing. That's what we use a lot in our products as well. Mm -hmm. So there are like two enzymes which basically break down the lipids and the the the, the proteins from the cells and gently take off the dead skin cells. The most gentle form of exfoliation. Yeah, I think I've tried it too. Yeah. And like I have a very dry skin and it's it's so gentle. A very light scrub. And it's like it it, it just mm -hmm. like it's the most gentle form of exfoliation. The third form of exfoliation are acid peels. They not only take your dead skin cells off, they also take your healthy skin cells off. And then something is happening which is really, really bad for us. We kill our microbiome and our skin barrier. You have to understand skin is like like a very difficult structure and it's a biotope we're having like we know it's in our gut we have a microbiome in our gut in our genitals in our mouth but also in our skin as a microbiome parasites fungus bacteria, viruses whatever it is it sits on our skin so if we now do acid peels or retin-a mm -hmm. we destroy that and we yeah. cause inflammation so inflammation is not what we want we don't want to have broken skin barrier and a broken microbiome because this is what keeps our skin healthy and i swear if we respect our microbiome our skin barrier if we keep it strong and healthy our skin will be glowing glowing and beautiful if you use an acid peel you get this waxy kind of shiny face that's not good we want the glow you we know do want the glow <laughs> <laughs> i feel everyone so this is kind of also i feel like where like nutrition and like you know gut health like it also plays a big role and like ties back into like healthy skincare so for people at home like if you only could have like three to five products mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which products should everyone use on a daily basis so you should have a cleanser of with a cleanser it's it's very very important that the cleanser has the right ph you know because our skin is slightly acidic and if you would use soap for example you know it's very alkaline yeah, you would mess alkaline. up your ph and microbiome so important that the cleanser is hydrating twice a week like using an enzyme cleanser to exfoliate then i think you even should... if you have dry skin and yes. oily skin yeah, yeah, for yeah. Both. Okay. yeah. Uh, absolutely you know once or twice a week oily skin probably want to use it even more some people with oily skin they use it every day yeah but you know, just like, that is a really good product to exfoliate gently. And then you can decide, do I want to have a toner? Then I would re recommend like a beautiful, gentle, hydrating toner to even out the pH, but also yeah. prepare your skin, um, like our balancing toner. But there are lots of toners out there which are super aggressive, you know? So that is, this is why we have to become experts. And then you definitely have to use a hyaluronic serum. It's like the white t-shirt yeah. of the skincare routine and a good moisturizer. I and cannot like go without that, without that yeah. serum at all. It just like really yeah. hydrates the skin. And uh, also, you definitely have to have the good C. Most of the vitamin C serums out there, they're too highly concentrated. And they use a vitamin C from the l ascorbic acid. l ascorbic acid is vitamin C, but th this form of vitamin C bombards your skin surface. And it sits on the surface and it really creates sensitivity, it creates a broken skin barrier function so you need to have a low concentrated vitamin c you have Ooh, to have wow, vitamin this is a c really which, good tip here. which which penetrates mm -hmm. into the skin and really releases the efficacy yeah. in deeper skin layers and that's why it's so important um, to have this formulation it also has vitamin e and aloe vera which is so great to um, protect skin 
and just you just pat it <laughs> on. It's super anti-aging because it boosts the collagen production, and it helps to um, catch free radicals. You know that is yeah. really really such a good serum, and that's why I think especially, you know, the younger generation mm -hmm. really loves this one. So night routine would be a night serum. And the night serum is also hyaluronic acid based, so yeah. it's like you basically replace your hyaluronic acid in the morning with the night serum, and then your good C, and then your moisturizer. And then you're all set. So we actually had kind of a funny, um, not a funny situation when we walked in here, because it's like a rainy day here in, in LA, and um, you were applying some like glow drops, and Max and I were both wearing like sunscreen today, and we're like, oh no, wait, we're not adding like drops on top because we are wearing sunscreen. Two questions here. So first of all, why is sunscreen mm -hmm. so important? And we just catch up quickly on something that even when it's raining outside, it's not completely necessary to wear sunscreen. So we have to start from the, what is, what is sun doing? So yeah. we, when we look at sun, it's radiation, it causes inflammation, it causes free radicals on our skin, it causes um, a lot of problems to our skin, you know, from aging, pigmentation, um, you know, even cancer. You know, sun yeah. is quite inflammatory, number one. Number two, sun is very, very important to us. Mental health, vitamin D production. When the sun is out, you got to wear sunscreen, yeah. absolutely. You also got to wear sunscreen when you have like these treatments like retinol, retinic, glycolic, hydroquinone, um, acid peels no chance you shouldn't protect every second of your day because you make okay. your skin so vulnerable. Broken skin barrier, broken microbiome, no, you know, yeah. you just like put your skin raw. But you also should think then about the HEV light coming from the phones. Same aggressive like sun. People overlook that issue as well. Oh wow, I so, actually never Yeah, thought HEV about light, that. pollution, pollution, super aggressive on our skin. So mm. they're a little more than just sun. We should pay attention to look at all the inflammatory stressors, not just sun. It should be HGV, it should be pollution. And I created the anti-pollution drops. This is a hyaluronic acid base too. And this is a really good product, especially for the city, because um, pollution can create acne. Know. You know, for example, in Paris, I was talking to a journalist and this journalist was, she had terrible acne, this poor girl. And she said, I never had acne. I moved to Paris a year ago and my acne started. I gave her the anti-pollution drops. It healed her. It was crazy. The molecules from the hyaluronic acid, they're proven to strengthen skin barrier functions. And that is important, you know, hydration, skin barrier function to protect from the, uh, the HEV, the screen light. But also we put ingredients in to create a shield on the skin to block that out. Gotcha. Well, so yeah, that is a really good one. I experienced the same thing when I moved to New York. Or, I mean, there are a lot of variables there, but like the pollution, kind of like yeah. the dirtier city, and yeah. you know, obviously, like it has like more stress levels and things like that. But yeah, protecting the skin in that sense is like super, super important. Yeah. So I actually this morning I asked on Instagram like a lot of my followers like the questions they have for you, and one thing what came up a lot was what to do when you have hormonal acne. Mm -hmm. What type of products to use? Like what kind of like treatments or you know if you don't have access to like treatments like how can you improve this so first of all we need to understand why do we have acne as i just said yeah. it can come from pollution it can come from stress you know if you have anxiety yeah, okay, cool. you don't sleep you know cortisol is rising in your blood level. it come, can come from your food maybe you, you can tolerate dairy maybe you know you eat hormone hormonally treated meat or dairy or whatever it is so we need to understand where it comes from. Maybe you, maybe you have hormonal imbalances. So it's always good to do a checkup, like with the doctor, lab yeah. work, change your diet, look into um, you know mostly plant-based diet, get your stress, et cetera, et cetera. But meanwhile, um, you should go on a routine. The, this is another big myth, by the way. You know, when you have exactly. breakouts, you should not dry out your skin. You should not scrub off your face. You should not. Be aggressive to your skin. It's like a kid. If a kid falls... Really? Because I feel like people tend to do yeah, like the opposite. Whenever you have breakouts, like, oh, I need to take care of my skin. And like you start doing all do the treatments. quick fixes. Yeah. Oh, I want it to be done, uh, gone by tomorrow. Yeah. It's not possible. So <laughs> when a kid falls, you know, and knee is bleeding, it's crying, you don't mm -hmm. put the kid in time out. It's the same with the skin. You don't put your skin yeah. in time out. You do exactly the opposite. Heal, repair, 
balance, hydrate. So let's do that. There were also a lot of questions about like, so let's say you're in a position where you can't like get regular facials. Um, what to do like when you have a lot of like blackheads or like clogged pores, mm -hmm. like what is the best way to take care of that yourself? Don't use those strips and all this like crazy. I know there are always these, these yeah, tools out it's there. So and bad. Like <laughs> it's so bad. So I tell you what, what could be good. So you can make a steam yourself at mm -hmm. home. You put a towel over and then the steam yeah, opens you all your put pores. Put like tea bags in there. Exactly, for, like, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and then what's really great, don't use mm -hmm. your nails. Take um, two Q-tips and just do it with two, yeah. two Q-tips and try gently. Don't be too aggressive. If you can't get it, then try again like a couple of days later. But um, yeah. try to get it. And do you use this. like alcohol after or on top or are you trying to avoid that? Yeah, I think you want to yourself? avoid unless you know you have like a little there. You know, I have like in Germany, we have this octinis sept, which is like non-alcoholic disinfectant. Yeah. So better to maybe do something with tea tree oil even, I don't know, like um, alcohol just on the spot maybe, yeah. you know, if you it's very cause harsh. a little damage, yeah. Yeah, yeah because it's also um, disrupting our skin barrier, you know. What is the best way to approach when someone like has like eczema either like on your hands or in your face and just mm -hmm. like red like inf inflammation, I guess? Yeah, so eczema can be coming from, you know, your background, your genetic background, but also can be caused by using the wrong inflammatory ingredients in skincare, so you can even cause, you know, self-inflicted yeah. damages. Um, what I learned really helps from our line is the kids' cream, the kids' body cream is amazing. Um, and also our calming serum. Have you tried the calming serum? Yeah, I've used that a lot, yeah, actually. I love yeah. this. Also, every guy needs to have a calming serum. <laughs> for me, oh, for Max, me, I'm bringing you one you try home, that <laughs> Guys, mostly they're rough, they have rough skin, you know. It's they much really, drier. You and know. as soon as you put the calming serum on it, it's just like, wow, I should have it's so nice. So like most of the serums, you just like layer on top. And that is great for mosquito bites, after treatments, after waxing, after whatever you do, you know, which leaves a little redness. Yeah. Um, for kids, so good. This is really, yeah, this is really nice. Ooh, I like this one. Are jade rollers actually helpful? Or are they unnecessary and don't really work? You know, um, before they were out here, I was, in, I was in Hong Kong and I always loved to go to the original flea markets. Yeah. So I went to the flea market um, in Hong Kong and I saw it at the, I saw the jade roller and I had and it. How long, how long was this ago? This is, couple of years. Okay. First of all, I love traditional Chinese medicine. I, I learned it. Um, I know how to do acupuncture and all this kind of stuff. So I think it's such a great, it's such a great yeah. tool. It's, it's nice to engage with your tissue. It's nice to, because it also promotes collagen growth because you can engage with your fibroblasts, with your skin cells. It's just every tool which massages nicely is a good tool. Don't do rough massages. Everything which hurts and burns and tingles that you should stay away from but that is just yeah, like a gentle so nice. nice you know massaging yeah. thing it's also yeah. like a form of like self-care where self -care. you're kind of like enjoying that yeah. moment and just put like it in the fridge time for yourself yeah put it in the Helps fridge well with like and, and use our hyaluronic ampules put it on and then out of the fridge <laughs> so nice anyway well thank you so much for taking your time and to answer like uh, a bunch of our skincare questions. Thank you for um, having me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and again, if you have any other questions, then don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. Follow Dr. Workstorm on Instagram. Um, and yeah, I will see you guys very soon. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye.